Buenos dias, mi amigos. Today, without much of the intro, let's take a look at how the latest and the best Express LRS Transmitter Module D Radio Master Ranger is built inside. Let's open this thing and let's see what's what. Like I mentioned already in my first video about the Ranger, this is a very nice quality item with the full metal aluminum CNC enclosure. So let's just void the warranty, open this thing up and let's see how it's built inside. As the four screws are removed, I think it's the moment when we can start to take the bottom plate off. It came out absolutely no problem and this is how the Ranger looks like. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is the PCB version 2.5, no 2.2. I wonder what happened with the original one. On this side everything looks pretty standard. Let's maybe remove this completely, let's remove the PCB completely from the box and let's see what's going on below because I would love to see how the cooling for the power amplifier on the RF section is built and also if we will be able to find any interesting details about the design. From what we know already the RF section over here is shielded. You see the shield over here which is a very nice thing. This means that not only it's not emitting as much of the RF wherever it goes and that can affect other devices but also it's less likely to be well jammed by something that's happening outside. I remove four, no, here's the fourth screw that holds the PCB together. It's a nice thing that they added this, this icon of the screw over here. That means that probably those are the screws you have to remove. They are more screws. Um, hmm, how to, okay, I think, I think like that. Um, Hmm, how this thing should... Okay, okay, okay. Ah, the joystick. It was the joystick that I probably should have removed in the first place because it was just placed from the outside. Important thing to, to remember, you remove the joystick first. So let's put this thing somewhere around. This side, uh, we have the fan over here, which is the centrifugal... Uh, fun, pretty nice, moves nicely. We have those four LEDs because this thing has a lot of RGB LEDs that shows everyone that it's super fancy device and the standard OLED screen. Just look at the size of this heatsink. I love it. I love the size of the heatsink on this thing. Apparently the fan, the centrifugal fan takes the air from the outside through those vent holes and just directs them forward and outside on this fan and the air just have to go through this heatsink and this section of the PCB that holds the uh, RF section. I'm sure that the overheating on this design is absolutely not a problem. Let's see if we can remove something else and of course this fan, this wire is uh, looks like it's fed to the fan itself. Okay, mm, let's remove some more screws and let's see what we will be able to observe if I will remove the top PCB. By the way, the top PCB looks like it's mostly for the enclosure, not really that it holds too much of the electronics. Yeah, it has the LEDs, it has the OLED and it has the joystick. But I think that all of the electronics should be actually on the bottom one. Yeah, exactly. You see, all the electronics, the voltage stabilization over here, the USB section, the microcontroller, the second microcontroller and the third microcontroller. That's a lot of microcontrollers. And the whole RF section, which is done by the Samtec SX1281. I think it's 1281. I think only Ghost uses 1280. They are compatible, only the 81 is missing some of the features like the ranging capabilities are over here and this is just, well, nice addition. Um, nice build, you even see the fan on top is covered with this metal, uh, metal sheet. I'm not really sure why, 
probably only to improve the flow. And just one more time, look at the size of this heatsink. It's huge, which is very, very Good. By the way, this video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube members. If you are not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. Thanks. It means a lot and it helps to grow the channel. I took my microscope so we can have a nicer look at the soldering quality and overlay layout. And so far I have to say that the soldering quality and the quality of the placement of all the components on the board is actually quite nice. From the outside, the bore itself maybe does not look as super nice with super nice stencil, but if you look on how everything is soldered together, how the solder joints looks like, it's actually pretty fine. Over here, uh, there is something like, I don't know, um, does it, is it? Maybe it's only luck you're missing in this place. Nothing major, but basically all the soldering joints look kind of nice. And this is also nice. All the SMD elements are actual parallel to each other. You have no idea how often you can see the elements that are not really parallel, but under different angles over here. And it, this just looks awful and it's just not a sign of the good soldering job and the good quality of the hardware itself. Over here everything looks good, nothing fancy. The thing that originally thought is the microcontrollers is indeed a USB to serial, CP2102, which is basically acts as the USB to serial for one of the ESPs on board that are handling the, the, the work on the, on, on the board. Because ESP does not have internal built-in USB, you have to have one of those bad boys installed. Here, let's take a look at the power section. Uh, this is here with the chokes. Uh, one more time, pretty hefty, pretty big choke. One more time, nice stabilization section. Here we have the LDO. Where is it? Um, yeah, that should be 3.3 volt NDO, uh, LDO AMS1117. One more time, nice soldering quality. Maybe there is some residue over here. Uh, I'm not sure if the end this is, looks like... Okay, this looks like like uh, it's only the flux. So there some traces of the flux. Maybe the board was not washed enough. Uh, because this is definitely not a lake here. It's just removable too easily. And it's not everywhere, like you see. Over here we have the section when like the flux state, it was probably from the XT30 connector and just the washing was slightly too short. Uh, but this is not the lake here, it's just uh, some of the flux. Um, I bet this is not corrosive so it won't uh, have any problems uh, outside. Power section here, one more time, nice uh, parallel elements, which is nice. And uh, here we go to the ESP32, which is, hmm, this thing, where's the antenna for the Wi-Fi? Oh, here we have the PCB antenna for the Wi-Fi. You can barely see the antenna, but it's here. You see the, this, uh, this bandy trace? This is the Wi-Fi antenna, which is connected via the RF section to the ESP32. This is the ESP32 that does the backpack functionality. And here, of course, wind bond, because we need external flash, uh, because uh, those things can come without the built-in flash, and you just need an external one. And here we come to the second, which is the ESP8285 which is the, sec the second uh, MCU that actually drives the RF section over here. So this is for the backpack. This one has the Wi-Fi and this one has the Bluetooth. And uh, this is the Windbond chip with the flash for the ESP, because if I remember correctly, this one comes without building flash. And you can see traces coming from the ESP to the Windbond chip, but if I remember correctly, ESP8285 comes with the built-in uh, flash, so we don't need external flash memory for those things. And here we have some traces going over here, 
and we should have somewhere the traces that lead to the RF section and that drives the here that drives the uh, actual RF. This is shielded. This is shielded. I will not be opening this thing. Uh, that's just too much of the of the hassle. I would have to remove at least two uh, two solder joints. This one and this one and pry this open. I will skip myself the pleasure. Inside is just a Semtech SX 1281 or 1280. I think 1281. And nothing really super fancy. Also, the power amplifier is uh, is over here, so we do not see the power amplifier section. Everything that handles the RF is under the shielding. Very good choice, by the way. And uh, only the things that are not really on the RF section are uh, easily available on the PCB. Here, another components one more time, nicely parallel SMD elements. And the 40 megahertz oscillator to drive everything. Let's take a look, quick look at the quality of the stencil. Uh, nice. I wonder what this this over coloration over here is. Maybe it's just the paint. Ah, I think it was the problem with the stencil itself. When the paint was applied, uh, it was just too close to the mask and it was ripped off. But besides that, looks fine, Ranger V22. I would like to see the V1 or V2.0, what they change between the releases. Because unfortunately, I don't know. And here one more time, we have some of the flags left from this bigger soldering uh, joint over here. And it was just not washed good enough. On the other hand, this is, I think, the regular non-corrosive flags. So on the longer run, it just doesn't matter because it's only uh, for the aesthetic. If this was corrosive, this would have to be removed. But because it was not, it, I think it was just cheaper to leave it where it was. Final look at the XT30, exactly the same thing. Yeah, that's just uh, regular flux left over there. In overall, pretty nice and I do appreciate that there is active cooling, such a big active cooling by the way, and even bigger heat sink over here that handles all the heat that will be generated by the RF section over here. By the way, today I find out that there is 2 watt mod for this thing and you can switch the power amplifier from outputting total 1 watt to 2 watts of RF power. By the way, that's highly illegal everywhere where you fly. And most probably you never really want to fly with 2 watts. But if you really want to, if you have the HAM license, you can. Why not? Now, here's the next video you should watch. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching. And like always, happy flying!